Welcome to the Project Marmot Raid Guides. My name is Ciderhelm from Tankspot.com, and in this video I'm going to be introducing Wrath of the Lich King raiding locations and gear requirements, and give a brief primer on what you can expect going forward. Before I do that, I'm going to touch briefly on our video format and how the Tankspot community fits into all of this. If you're watching these videos on YouTube, pay attention to two special links on each of these pages. The first link is right below the movie player on the right side, reading, Watch in High Quality. Though some of the initial videos I uploaded are not available in high quality, most of them will be. So make sure you watch it in this format if it's available to you and if your bandwidth can handle it. The second link is to the right of my username in the upper right corner of the page. This is the subscription button. By clicking this, you'll receive notifications every time I update movies here on YouTube. Keep in mind that this is also my personal YouTube page, and I will occasionally put up videos designed strictly for tanks rather than for full raids. Sometimes I may put up videos that aren't particularly related to WoW at all. Use your best judgment in determining whether a new video is of interest to you. Finally, all of these movies have a dedicated discussion on Tankspot.com. These discussions often contain movies from many other guilds, movies from the original 40-man encounters, and text guides and walkthroughs from other members of the community. I would strongly recommend raid leaders and others, even non-tanks, to stop by Tankspot.com and make use of the Project Marmot forums. To get to them, either use the Movies link on the top navbar on Tankspot.com or the Project Marmot banner on the right side of the news on the front page. All that said, let's get into the raid scene. With Wrath of the Lich King, Blizzard has made some very serious and positive changes to their raid design. They are now releasing both 10-man and 25-man heroic raids of the same zones, designed for parallel progression so guilds of either size will be able to see everything the game has to offer. So far, these encounters are not only very similar to each other, but with the new version of Noxramus being released, they are also very similar to the original 40-man encounters. For this reason, many of the videos in this channel are worth including in 25-man guides as well, and all of the Project Marmot forum discussions are intended to cover both. Blizzard has also introduced a new achievement system, which allows for several opportunities for talented players to set themselves apart from the crowd. When attempting to complete achievements, there are some cases where completing a 10-man encounter can be more difficult than completing the 25-man version of the same encounter, due to the limited availability of class buffs. While the complexity of many of the Northrend encounters is significantly beyond the complexity of the Burning Crusade 10-mans, the gear requirements are substantially easier this time around. A raid group in Quest and Instance Blues could get started on 10-man raiding immediately. You will want to make sure that your main tank has 540 defense skill, unless they're a druid. The more crafted, heroic, and emblem gear the tank can collect, the easier time the raid will have throughout these encounters. However, it's not necessary to progression. Your secondary tank will want 535 defense, since many of the early encounters will not require them to engage a raid boss, and they will want to reach 540 defense as soon as possible. Keep in mind that it is possible for a raid to overgear the raid content before entering it. This is because much of the gear of the same item level and quality can be acquired outside of raiding, including 10-man Tier 7 tokens for chest and hand slots from Emblems of Heroism, which can be acquired from Heroics. Currently, the best raid composition for 10-mans is 3 healers, 2 tanks, and 5 DPS. For 25-mans, you will ideally be looking at only 3 consistent tank slots, 7 to 9 healers, and the remainder of your raid being DPS. There is flexibility in these numbers, so make adjustments where necessary. There are several different progression paths your guild can take, and after watching these movies you'll get an idea of which routes are best for your guild. Let me explain where each of the encounters are, and what the general progression is through this. One of the first encounters you'll want to take on is Archivon. He can be found north of the Dalaran portal into Wintergrasp, while your faction controls his own. He is a very easy encounter and your raid should have no problems handling it. Sartharian is found in the Obsidian Sanctum beneath Wormrest Temple. Look for the portal in the rear guarded by two Obsidian Dragonkin. Naxxramas is also found in Dragonblight, over the eastern edge of the zone. Once you've zoned in, you'll be given the option of going through four different wings. The first wing is the Arachnid Quarter, also known as the Spider Wing, indicated by the large spider above the entrance. This begins with Anubricon, goes to Grand Widow Ferlina, then concludes with Mextem. The second wing is the Plague Quarter, also known as the Plague Wing. This begins with Noth the Plaguebringer, goes to Hygen the Unclean, then concludes with Lotheb. The third wing is the Construct Quarter, also known as the Abomination Wing. This begins with Patchwork, goes to Grobulus, goes to Gluth, and then concludes with Thaddeus. The fourth wing is the Military Quarter, also known as the Death Knight Wing. 
This begins with Instructor Resuvius, goes to Gothic the Harvester, and concludes with the Four Horsemen. Once each of these wings has been cleared, a special portal to Frostworm Lair opens up in the center of the Citadel. Frostworm Lair contains Saffron and Kel'Thuzad. With the key obtained from Saffron, you can move to Malagos in the Kaldara region of Borean Tundra. The instance portal for Malagos is above the Nexus and the Oculus. In Naxxramas, the progression you choose through each of these zones can vary, but generally guilds will clear the spider wing first. Instructor Resuvius and Not the Plaguebringer are also good for early encounters. The Abomination Wing, in entirety, as well as Gothic and the Four Horsemen, may cause issues for new raids. Saffron, Kalthazad, and Malagos will all be difficult for many guilds depending on raid balance, gear, and experience. These are intended as introductory raids. They won't be too difficult, though don't be concerned if some encounters take your raid longer than you expect. As always, I'd strongly recommend stopping by tankspot.com if you have any questions or suggestions, or just want to discuss some of the content. Thank you.